1994 Toyota Celica GT4. So this is the uh, turbo four-wheel drive, all singing, all dancing version. Obviously, as you can see, finished in nice bright red. This car, obviously 94, it was brought into the UK in 2001. All GT4s in the UK were imports that were never sold direct in the UK. This one looking good on its uh, on its standard three spoke wheels as well. Normally they're on aftermarket wheels by now. Let's start by having a look at the bodywork. We start on this front driver's corner. You can see front bumper meets up nice and neat with the uh, the wing. I believe, and I think some of the GT4 experts will tell me differently, but I believe this is quite a rare front bumper on here. Um, but we will do some research and put that in the description. This front driver's wing, you've got a very light scratch just here, very, very tiny one there. The arch itself is lovely and sharp all the way around. As you can see there, nice and clean on the inside. Like I said, it's on the original three spoke wheels. I believe these have been refurbed recently. They're lovely and crisp and clean, as you can see. Uh, and it's got four matching, good quality fire stones all around again, sign of good ownership. Nice and tidy on the rest of that front wing. As we move down the driver's side, we can have a good look underneath the car. Again, um, I believe last year the car had subframes off, all cleaned, powder coated, all that sort of stuff, uh, and a load of other sort of refresh, tidying up work done. If you check the description, we'll detail everything that we know has been done to the car. You can see that side skirt sits so nice and straight. Driver's door, sorry, there's a bit of sun there. Driver's door, lovely and clean. If we look down this side of the car, can see nice and straight it's not full of filler or any ripples or anything like that coming up this a pillar got a little mark in the paint just there uh, and another one just there it's where it's had like a stone chip touched in by the looks of things coming up onto the roof nice and straight no ripples or dents in that have to excuse the low sun there sort of setting the camera off a little bit nice and clean along the windscreen edge there all the glass on this one nice and tidy as well toyota stamped glass it's not caked in scratches or anything Seal along the bottom of the windows again, that's all good. Quite often they can sort of corrode and bubble up, but they're good all the way around. The rears, I did notice here, you can just see it there. It's a bit of a bird poo mark in the paint on that pillar. Coming down on the rear quarter on this side. Again, this is normally the corrosion hotspot, but this is all good on there, as you can see. The arch, the lip, all the way around, really sharp, all the way around, no sign of any corrosion. Lovely and clean. Another good wheel and tire, another matching firestone. Rest of the arch on the face and everything, that's all good. All the way around. There is a little mark in the paint just there as well. You can just see that. Come around on the back, both rear tail lights. Bright and clear, no cracks or any sign of any moisture in those. All the badges are good. They've not been sort of polished away or over or rubbed off by sponges or anything like that. And then obviously the GT4 has got this high level spoiler. This one's really nice and clean and tidy. Both sides of the stanchions, they're all good. As you can see, it's not faded or anything like that. Quite often they would fade. And then the underside, really good. It's not had the boot lifted up and down or anything like that by it. Bumper on the rear, both corners. Nice and tidy. They've not been scuffed or caught or anything like that. Got an aftermarket exhaust on it there. As you can see, it sits nice and even and straight. Let's have a look underneath from this side again. You can see really, really good underneath. See that subframe? Super, super clean. And then looking up the passenger side again, not full of filler, not full of ripples, nice and straight. Rear arch is all good, no sign of any corrosion on that. And again, the lip on the underside, really sharp all the way around. Another good wheel and matching Firestone tire. Have another look at the roof from this side. Really nice and straight. On this rear screen, that's all good as well. Normally these rear wipers get deleted as well. It's good that's still there. Heated rear screen. It does have tints on the rear and the rear corner windows as well. We'll have another look underneath from this side. And like I say, those subframes have been done recently. Along with wish, um, suspension, brakes, I believe. But again, check the description. We'll detail all that in there for you. No real marks to point out on that rear quarter. Body kit on this side is all nice and tidy. Couple of little sort of marks in the paint there, that one polished out. Another one there is almost like it's 
Got a little bit of a reaction in the paint, just a slight one there. Once, probably a good cut and polish. We get rid of a lot of that by the looks of things. And all good along that gutter on this side. We do have a tiny little bleb, just just starting on the corner of the windscreen there. That one's sorted out. No scuff on the wing mirror or anything like that. And then coming onto the front arch again, lovely and clean and tidy, nice and sharp. We do have a stone chip just there that's broken the paint. The arch itself, lovely and sharp all the way around. Nice and clean, the rest of the wing's good. A couple of little stone chips there as well, but again, you'd expect that. And your final good matching wheel and tyre. Coming around on the front. Headlights are nice and clean and clear. There is some stone chips on the front that one touched in. It's probably an easier job just to get the bumper painted, to be fair, because you do have a couple of little speckles in the paint where it's been painted before. Uh, in the headlight bowls, basically where it's difficult to polish. Headlights are all nice and clean and bright. There's no sign of any moisture in those. And again, like I said, I'll, I'll double check, but from what I understand, that front bumper is quite a rare aftermarket bumper. And then your GT4 has got this slightly different bonnet with the intakes, the single intake here as well. But the bonnet itself, lovely and straight. A couple of little bird poo marks just in the paint that one polished out there. Other than that, all good. Moving on to the interior. This one, black leather. Decent spec as well. Electric windows, electric mirrors. Air conditioning. It's got a Sony aftermarket head unit in there. This one shows, I don't know if you can see that, might be a bit dark, 121,000 miles. And again, like I say, check the description, we'll detail what we know about service history, where it's been, things like that. Got mats down, but underneath the carpet set, as you can see, really dark, no ingrained dirt or anything in that. Nice, clean and tidy. We'll pop the bonnet and the boot while we're there. Driver's seat is really, really good. Virtually no sign of anywhere on that bolster at all. Same on the bottom, really, really good. Again, 90s Japanese leather, didn't wear that well, but this has been really, really well looked after, as you can see. Back of the seat on this side is all good. And the rear seats don't look like they've been sat in hardly at all. There's no sign of any wear. There's no funny smells. The carpet's lovely and clean. Headlining looks like brand new. There's no marks at all on that. Really, really good. Steering wheel has a little bit of wear. The sort of 10 and two positions where your hands would be. Um, but overall, generally pretty good. And then the gear knob and handbrake, they're good. Armrest, that's not been sort of overly used or worn flat or anything like that. Door shuts are nice and tidy. Bottoms of the doors are good. There's no sign of any corrosion coming through there. And then to the boot, the struts are nice and strong. They hold it up. I've had a couple of these where they flop down constantly, but that's all good. Undo this and have a good look at there. Hasn't been cut or anything for speakers. Because it's had the tint on as well, it hasn't faded. It's still nice and dark. And then under here, all your carpet set. Nice and clean. Let's see if we can get that lifted up and have a look under there. So under here again, no sign of any corrosion coming through. Still got the original board on top of the wheel. Which obviously you can undo. No sign of any trap moisture or anything like that. Just what you want to see. Put all that back down. And then into the passenger side. Another nice clean, tidy door card. Painted bits of the door, all good. Door shuts nice and tidy. And then again, this seat, no sign of any real wear at all. It's not overly shiny. It's nice and firm. Backrest is all good as well. These aren't all stretched out from people putting things in them. And again, like I said, the back, the back seats, I mean, they hardly got used in cars like this, but these are really, really good. Carpet set on this side again, lovely and clean. All this side of the dash is nice. We do have um, a boost controller in there. It's a blitz. Um, it's sort of set to mild at the minute. From what I understand, you can turn it up to turbo nutter if you want. And then under here, as you can see, lovely and clean around the strut tops. That firewall, all nice and tidy. All the tags and everything are present and clear. Do you have this sort of bit of carbon trim here and there? I think I've got a two litre turbo. Uh, it does have a Clifford fitted, which does work. Um, to start it up, it's just blip it to turn it off. And then key in the ignition and off you go. And if we go straight around the back, we'll show you there's nothing nasty flying out the back. 
apart from a light for the door open and the seat belt we've got no warning lights or anything in there that's your head unit all fired up it's got all sorts of toys on that nice and smooth under there the owner was using it fairly regularly until it came here he's heading off to australia for a few months so he's not going to use it so he's decided to part with it give it a little bit of a rev i'm not going to bounce off the limit because it is cold Again, as you can see, nothing nasty flying out the back. I have briefly taken it down the road. It does seem to boost properly, it drives nice. Very surpri or surprisingly quick for what it is. Again, a lot of these sort of 90s turbo cars turn out to be disappointing by modern standards, but actually this still feels really quick by today's standards. Um, so there you have it, 1994 Toyota Celica GT4. Of course, you can come and have a look at the car in person. We're open six days a week, just give us a shout, we'll book you in. Um, and again, we can do them on a Sunday if you need. Or uh, if you can't get to see the car again, like I say, get in touch. We can do video calls. We can answer more questions that you might have. Uh, send in extra photos, videos, whatever you need. Just let us know. Thank you.